Hello, hello my friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And yeah, Christmas cards. <laughs> Christmas in July. It's a thing. Um, some brands release or start releasing Christmas themed products in July. So I made some Christmas cards and I usually don't. It's hard for me to like shift gears and do something completely different. Um, I'm not in a Christmas mood. However, we have a bit of a cold front and I literally had my heater on here in the garage today as I was crafting these because um, <laughs> I was cold. So I was like, just feeling the Christmas spirit. Anyway, uh, this video is part of a blog hop. It's Waffle Flowers July release and they generally do. Christmas and July theme products. There's some other products as well that aren't specifically, but I went th with the Christmas stuff because I will have links to uh, the new release um, on my blog and in the description box below the video, which also there'll be a link to my blog. But my main um, focus for today's project was this new postage collage die. And love it, love it, love it. I didn't use any of the little dies, just the main one, and it cuts out a panel. And then there are different stencil sets already available for like that came out with this release. So there's like a basic stencil set that's two layers. So I just call this basic, just basic, you know. And then there's this one that is the it's called the everyday one, and it's also a layering set. And different little icons, you know, male theme, little hands holding heart, etc. And everything's shaped and sized to fit specifically inside these. So you die cut it, lay it, and I'll show that. And then the final one, of course, is the Christmas set. And this is a four stencil set. And I had so much fun with this. I had fun. So I used... I went Christmas. I used that. And I also... There's a little stamp set that goes with it too called Postal Collage that has all the like little cancellation marks, little um, different denominations for the stamps, everything. It's, it's just fun. It's just fun. So yeah, I'm not starting my Christmas series just yet. I was planning on it, but I've had a lot on my plate and I haven't had time to, cause you know, I do up graphics and all those things to like officially start the Christmas series. And it just ain't happening. I don't know if I'm going to start it this month, like later on this month or not. Um, I usually start my Christmas series in September, August, September, depending. Uh, for those not aware, I do Christmas series every year, just Christmas cards. And I compile it all into a playlist and I don't follow a schedule because this is my life. <laughs> um, but I also do Halloween series and that will be starting soon. Stay tuned. Um, so yeah, a lot, there's going to be a lot and it'll be all over the place. And like I said, no schedule, you just got to stay tuned and it'll be like a Christmas video, a Halloween video, a regular card making video, you know, like it's all over the place, tons of content, lots of fun stuff. It's all good. So this, will, these will just be bonus. It's just a bonus Christmas card inspiration video. And it's just kicking off in a way, um, my Christmas cards, cause I do make a lot. So yeah, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made the cards. My first step with these cards was to die cut panels of white cardstock using that posted postage collage wafer die. And then I'm working on my little waffle flower mini stencil mat. And funny enough, with this release, waffle flower has released um, photopolymer mats that are going to be fabulous. They showed up after I was done fil filming. <laughs> that package got here and I was like, no, it would have been so perfect because they're just awesome. Waffle Flyer has a video on their channel explaining them. I will be showing them in future videos once I actually get a chance to play with them. But the wonderful thing about them is they cling to all the things. They fit in the stencil mats. Some fit in the misties. There's, I'll have links to them with the new release. So anywho, I just made do and it still worked fine. So I decided, since I usually try to make multiples, when it, especially when it comes to Christmas cards, um, I die cut four panels with that postage collage wafer die. 
And then the Christmas stencil set that coordinates, like I said, there are four layering stencils. And really, the sky's the limit with these. Um, color combos, all the things. I used multiple colors. And I kind of just, I just was ju jumping back and forth. I had no set um, plan in mind because this was literally my first time using them. Plus I, I didn't have a color combo. I was just like, mm, I'm going to use like light brown for it, like the deer and the, the house. And then I was like, ooh, let's use like some sage greens for, you know, the greenery. And I just kind of went from there. <laughs> So I'm using uh, Waffle Flower blending brushes and Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated inks. And I'll link to all the ink colors, everything. I'll have links to all the supplies like I always do. So um, I just kind of kept doing everything in uh, sections. So, you know, I did the little deer in that house on all four pieces. Then I went back and did the greens, you know, on all four pieces. Now I'm using uh, Cheeky ink on the you know center like kind of poinsettia pattern and what will be ornaments and I do all of that all at the same time and I just keep like repeating this process I can't even tell you like the actual time of how long this took that this was the most um I would say this took the most time out of all the elements of the cards but also I was doing four you know and I just zoned out. I had music going and was doing my thing. Like I had to hear going. I should have had Christmas music going, but like I said, I'm I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> uh, but I had music going, doing my thing, and just enjoying um, the process of making these all come together. And it's another one of those things where once you've done it once, you see how all the layers come together, how it looks in the end, and. Uh, I just, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. So the one thing I did differently is for this, um, this does like the background around the deer, as you can see. And I've talked about this in other videos. When I have stencils that have parts that only have one connecting point, so specifically like those like antler areas of the deer, I like using my uh, Pick a Fence Studio paper pouncers for that because I'm just literally pouncing the ink and not using a brush. Um so that those parts don't move and it just stays as is. So I also use just a bit of post-it tape to like mask around that just so my pouncer wasn't picking up the red ink already on the stencil and it just made things easier. So I went in with, yeah, a darker shade of greens. Oh yeah, the first shade of green was Aspen. The second shade of green was Sage because that's slightly darker. And then uh, cheeky was that first kind of peachy red color and then I did watermelon and then my like reddest red is cherry and this is when I ended up pulling out the uh, waffle flowers little little tiny baby blending brushes these are the zero size zero yeah the size the shader zero brushes I've shown these in a bunch of videos these are perfect I you can see I just use them to get specific you could skip this and just use a bigger blending brush and blend it's fine but I was like well the reindeer has to have a red nose because obviously <laughs> and then I was like "Ooh!" and then I could give the house a red door because you know I got these tiny little brushes I can just I can do what I want so that's what I did I used the larger brush for the poinsettias on the top right there and then I just used my little baby brushes to add darker brown to the deer so that was cappuccino ink and then the cherry ink for the nose and like the collar and the little door on the house and as it's again, as it's like all starting to like come together and all these layers, it's like, oh, this is just brilliant. And I, leg I legit loved it. I, I'm hoping I can do another set, like just do different color combos with these because these were a lot of fun. So my final colors, I wiped this stencil because this was, this is still stencil number three. I haven't even gotten to stencil four yet. But with a third stencil, I'd wiped it off like all that red ink because then I went in with sea foam to do the background around the tree and the little like kind of starbursts around the ornaments. And then for my final layer, I decided to step it up a little bit and add um, some paste. And this is Nouveau Glacier Paste in Golden Era. I have an entire playlist using Glacier Paste. And I will link to that at the end of this video. These have been around for several years now. One thing to note with Glacier Pace. From what I understand, they dry out in the container quite quickly. However, this is proof that my little press and seal trick 
works. I have kept all my glacier pastes sealed with press and seal. None of them have dried out. And I have had these since they were like some of the colors since they were originally released. So I don't even know how many years ago, but it's been years and they still work the same as the day I got them. So the glacier paste, if you're not aware also is the closest thing I've ever come to or product I've ever found to get like a foiled look without mucking around with foil because I know some people just have zero interest in doing foiling of any sort that's fine but if you want to get the look and not get you know tools and extra things and all that stuff glacier paste man when this stuff dries it be it's the closest you can get to foil and I loves it so I applied that on the last stencil onto all these panels and it just chef's kiss <laughs> so I just applied it with my little spatula um, I should also mention, all you can kind of see it. Um, all these stencils have etch lines in them too. So you can line like s the squares so you can line them up. Like everything is just, it's all done for you. And I love this. I've mentioned this before with Waffle Flowers stencil sets. Like they're labeled, they're, they're, they have explanations. Some of them will even have things like dark ink, light ink. Like I loves it anything that just it's like we not only designed the products but we thought it all out for you and we put it all in front of your face and I'm like yes like I'm a professional I do this for a job but I love it when they do all of this for me <laughs> so after I let the paste dry which didn't take very long also I like sealed up my jar again washed my stencils everything's good to go and I let it dry which yeah didn't take very long at all if you apply the glacier paste thin, um, it dries quite quickly. And then I really enjoyed stamping all of these little like postage marks and cancellation marks from the little coordinating stamp set. And I just stamped them wherever, you know, I used a uh, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and I just put a bunch of the stamps onto acrylic blocks and then just started stamping. And for me, this was just so ridiculously fun because it's like here look at me I'm making my own postage stamps <laughs> you know I just think it's so cute literally so I went along and just did this all randomly I was like cancellation mark here this one that circular one says sending hugs you've got different um uh amounts for you know the value of the stamps all the things so I just went around and just filled in all of these with those little stamps and that to me just completely finished them off so after I had finished um, stamping all of the little different cancellation marks etc then um, I decided to pull out an older stencil this is not part of the new release this came out I don't even know when this came out I've had it for a while it's the duotone Christmas tree stencil and this one actually has you can't really see it on camera but it has etch marks so you can shift it to get um two basically like two extra trees I'll show in a second because I did the first layer and I'm using some lawn fawn like sage cardstock and that same sage ink that Simon Says Stamp positively saturated ink and on these two panels I'm just holding the stencil in place again blending that ink over it and while I still have ink on this stencil, I decided to use this one on the insides of all my cards as well, because why not? And it just gives the insides, you know, that little extra something. So all my card bases are going to be white note cards and two are going to be portrait, two are going to be landscape. And yeah, I basically just use kind of the ink that was left over in the stencil. And then since I'm doing multiple card bases, um, I would lightly tap my brush into the ink pad to bring in a little bit extra ink so that I can do all four of the insides at once. So I went along, stenciled all the insides with this stencil. And then once that was done, I'm gonna wipe all of the ink off of this stencil because I'm going to finish off the pattern on the sage cardstock with that glacier paste, just to bring in a little bit, a little bit extra because two of the cards, you're actually gonna see a bit more of the background, but two of them, I'm going to leave, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to cut apart the little postage stamps I made, which you'll see in a minute. So I only needed to stencil two of the panels because the other two, it's irrelevant. So I finished the insides of the cards, or at least the stenciling on the inside of the cards. Then I wiped off the stencil 
And yeah, there's etch marks that you can line up with what you previously stenciled. So that's what I did. I lined it up with the previous um, inked up portion. And then I applied that same golden era glacier paste over the stencil with my little spatula, just applying it nice and thin. And I'm going to do that to both pieces. I'm going to set those aside, let those dry, wash the stencil off again. Um, this this stuff, the glacier paste isn't as bad as like glitter paste to remove, but like everything, it's just so much easier if you wash your stencils immediately or have a container of water and let just toss your stencils in there and let them soak until you do have a chance to actually clean them. It's It just saves so much time and effort. <laughs> So once I'm done, I just take mine to the sink and clean them off. So applied that to my backgrounds. And then, like I said, cleaned off my stencil, cleaned off my spatula, sealed up my container again. And then I um, pulled out a piece of black cardstock and my mini Misty. And for my like main sentiments on all my cards, I'm using, this is the new uh, Elegant Christmas Sentiments stamp set. And there's a bunch of different greetings in here. So I chose four of them for these cards. And I used my anti-static powder tool on the cardstock. And then kind of wiped off the, or brushed off the excess. And then I'm inking up all these sentiments with clear embossing ink. And I'm going to ink them up and stamp them twice. Because they're brand new stamps. Making sure I got everything stamped. And then I'll coat them with Simon's Gold Embossing Powder. Once those are coated with the embossing powder, tap off the excess. Uh, melt all this with my heat tool till everything is smooth and shiny and fabulous. And then I will wipe away that excess anti-static powder with one of my microfiber cloths. And then this sentiment set has coordinating wafer dyes. So I use those to die cut all these sentiments. They are also the type of sentiments that are really easy to like cut with a paper trimmer, you know, or use just regular, you know, sentiment label wafer dyes. But because I had the coordinating wafer dies, that's what I'm, of course, going to use. So <laughs> taped all those in place with washi tape so that they don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine. And then I die cut all those sentiments. And then once those were die cut, um, after I had done that, this is where I trim apart only two of these panels. And this was just really fun, too. <laughs> Like cutting them apart, I was like, oh, these are so cute. I just loved it. So I cut them apart and then I also trimmed just a little bit just because you it's like that even with regular postage stamps when they come on a sheet like this, like some still do, although most of them nowadays, you know, they're self-adhesive and you just peel and stick. But sometimes when you cut them apart, some look a little more jagged, if that makes sense. So I just, I did a little bit of extra trimming just to even out a bit, but again, perfection is not necessary and it's overrated. So I trimmed apart two of the panels. Two I kept as is, just to mix things up a little bit. And then after I had trimmed apart um, those panels off camera, I fiddled around and like came up with like a couple of layouts. And then I also pulled out, of course, some Baker's Twine because that's just been my thing lately. I've been enjoying adding Baker's Twine to my cards again. And it was also just kind of perfect for these cards. So with the um, panels that I didn't cut apart, I just wrap the Baker's Twine right around. And then like I always do, start my knot, use my reverse tweezers to pinch it closed and hold it while I fiddle and get the, the bow in place where I want it. I don't pull anything tight, especially with Baker's Twine because it's twisted. So I don't pull anything tw tight until I've got it the way I want it. And then I do. Remove the tweezers, pull it tight. Everything's good to go. Trim off the excess. And then on the back of this panel, I used uh, Simon's Big Mama foam tape just to give it a little bit of dimension, not a whole lot of bulk. And then I popped this onto a piece of that same sage leaf cardstock. And now you can see why I didn't bother stenciling it because you only see a bit of it and you see it through the little like, you know, dotted holes there. But there would have been no point stenciling it in my opinion. That's why I didn't. So I did that. And then I used uh, Waffle Flowers Black foam tape to pop up the sentiment onto this card panel. I'm going to do the same thing with the second card panel. And then the other two. Um, yeah, I didn't press the button to film. You know, I am very professional and I do this for a living. And, you know, 
yeah, I, I, I was like in my little zone. Like I said, I had music going, I was doing my thing, I was enjoying the whole process, wasn't looking up like I do 99% of the time, wasn't looking up and didn't realize I wasn't filming. <laughs> But I'll show how they came together, see? And then I'll show at the end, of course, too. So I just popped those individual, like, postage pieces with foam tape. Also wrapped some Baker's twine and, yeah, popped the sentiments up with the black foam tape. Samesies. All the things. And then as a final thing, on the inside of the card, I used the new Inside Christmas Sentiments that Waffle Flower just released. I love this set. There are some really good little phrases in here. Sometimes some sets I'm like, eh, you know, I wouldn't say that to someone or, you know, I wouldn't choose that in my card or etc. You know, it's just all different things. This is one of those ones where I was like, I like like all of these sentiments. I would use pretty much all of them and they're just good ones. So I chose four different sentiments like wishing you and yours the merriest of holidays. May the, may the season be full of love and light. Um, this Christmas, I am thankful for all the blessings in my life. You are at the top of that list. Merry Christmas, my dear friend. Like oh, wishing you peace, joy, and goodwill. May, may the spirit of Christmas stay with you all year round. Love it. Love it. Those are only three of them. There's multiples in that set. So like always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. Like I said, this is part of a blog hop. So there are many links to many amazing makers with tons of inspiration. Um, I'll have a link to the new release uh, with all the new products. That'll be in the blog post. There'll be picture links. So you can check that out. It'll be directly linked in the description box below. And you can see all the shiny faux foiledness. Oh, love, love. So <laughs> I will have the pictures of the cards, all of that in the blog post below as well. So just expand the description box and it's all there for you. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. It legit helps. It tells the robot overlords you guys like what you're seeing because my entire career is ruled by the robot overlords, aka the algorithms. So thumbs upping and commenting makes a huge difference and I very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you and stay tuned. I have plenty more videos coming so I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye!